Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Lamide Elizabeth and a year ago I moved from London to Dubai and I know that you guys have had so many different questions over the years, but I didn't really feel like I wanted to do an in-depth Q&A until I at least spent a year here so that I can really have an opinion and a take on things. So I'm gonna try and be as honest and truthful as possible. And for some background, I moved um, from London to Dubai in January of 2023. Um, and the year before that, I was working in London. I was working in the investment bank in London and I moved over here and I worked for another investment bank in Dubai. This is gonna make sense to some of the questions that are to come. What's the best way to look for jobs in Dubai? I always get this question and it's really hard to really pinpoint it. One thing I'm gonna say, because a lot of the people who follow me are interested in banking, is if you wanna move out here, you really need to think about whether it aligns with your career goals. I did a post on Instagram, maybe like a couple months ago, and I was just saying that when I was looking to move to Dubai, career progression was literally not on the top of my list. First was lifestyle, then money, then career progression. And the reason why I wanted to mention that is sometimes you might want things because it looks cool, there are benefits, but if your wish in life is to climb up the banking ladder, climb up the corporate ladder or whatever, the corporate space in Dubai is a lot smaller, especially with banking, it's a lot smaller, it's growing, it's a growing region and that does present opportunities. But if your main goal is to just climb up the ladder, climb up the ladder, it will probably be easier for you to do that in a city where the banking industry is a lot bigger because there's more teams, there's more opportunities. And at the end of the day, you wanna be where the decision makers are. And when it comes to banking, London, New York are the best places to be. What's the best way to look for jobs in Dubai? I'll just off the bat say, it's gonna be a lot harder for you to find banking roles and jobs in Dubai um, versus London versus New York versus where else is it Singapore that has a big finance hub and a lot of the times when companies are building out in new spaces they don't always go for the most junior roles first which I'm guessing like most people who are watching me are like you know analyst associate level they're not necessarily going to go for those levels first they're probably going to look for more managerial roles or people who can actually help with expansion first one way I would recommend is to look within your company. That'll probably be one of the easiest ways to do it is try and get a transfer within your company. I know a lot of people who are in consulting who have done that, a lot of people who are in law who, who have done that. I don't necessarily know as many people in banking who have done that. The other way is to apply on LinkedIn, which is actually what I did. I only ever made one application to one place and I got the one place that I applied for. LinkedIn isn't as effective here because there are so many people who wanna to come to Dubai. And so usually when a job role comes out, a bunch of people will apply who are not even qualified for the role. Um, and that's one of the things that we are trying to like tackle with Penn, like trying to help people move to Dubai and, and work with corporations to do that. So that's gonna be coming out this year. So if you aren't already, definitely make sure that you are following the professional network. You can hire a recruiter. I don't know many people who have successfully moved with the recruiter. A lot of people do it through networking, like knowing someone who's here, reaching out to them, thinking about the company that you wanna work for, seeing the people who are there who work in the Dubai office um, and trying to network with them. A lot of people move here first and then network with people because they find that to be a lot easier. Um, when we did our first pen event, that was one of the questions I asked people like, okay, how did you guys find your jobs um, here? And a lot of people like said that they were looking for a job in groups. So like if you find like a British expat groups British expats in Dubai Facebook group and then you go there and you say hey guys I'm looking for a job this is me this is my background if you know any roles let me know um I am in group chats with like LSE graduates and they're always, always posting jobs in there another thing you can do as well is on LinkedIn instead of looking for jobs just type in into the search bar, Dubai jobs, Dubai hiring, Dubai roles. And you actually see a lot of jobs there that don't come up when you actually look in the job search section. Some industries are so much easier to break into here. So if you are a teacher and you have a Western education, you are loved, highly, highly valued um, in not just Dubai, but other Middle Eastern countries. I've said in previous videos that like, sometimes you just have to take that same school that you have and apply it to a different setting. And all of a sudden you are highly sought after. So if you are an educator, 
UK are and you're trying to move here, like there are so many options. I will have one of my friends um, who I actually went to school with, who is also, she actually is working in Qatar as a teacher. And so I'm gonna go and see her and I'll do a video on there and she can share with you how she got her job. Can you talk about investment banking, salary difference between London and Dubai? It is always gonna work out to be more. Like it's always gonna work out to be more because there are no taxes. And especially when you start earning plus like on the other side of like 60K, 70K, the difference is huge. The difference is absolutely huge where it pertains to no tax because someone who's earning 100K in the UK, really and truly after tax, what are you taking home? Like 60K or something. Someone who's earning 90K in Dubai is actually taking home 90K. And then you add bonuses on top. If you get a 50K bonus in banking, you probably take home like 21, 22K. If you get a 50K bonus in banking in Dubai, you are taking home the entirety of that 50K. So it's always gonna be more if we are trying to make all things equal, right? Looking at the same company, pairing a salary route on the same company, same role, definitely take home more in Dubai. And what salary is needed to be comfortable in Dubai planning to move there next year? This question is really hard to just give one exact answer because it depends. It, are you a freelancer or are you working in corporate? If you're working in corporate, are you working in the DIFC? If you're working in the DIFC, then you're probably gonna wanna live downtown. You're probably gonna wanna live in Business Bay. The cost of living here is a lot higher. If you don't have to go into the office frequently or if your office is somewhere else that's like, not right next to uh, the Burj Khalifa and right next to Dubai Mall, then your rent can literally be half what you would pay in downtown. So it honestly really does depend. If you are someone in downtown, and let's just assume the person, you're a single person, I would say the absolute minimum, the absolute minimum, in my opinion, in my opinion, would be 60K on 60K pounds. And that's with the assumption that for me, rent is not gonna take up more than like 30% of your salary. And that's why I would say at minimum 60K. I'd say to be okay, 70 to 85,000 pounds a year. And then a good salary would be like 100K plus. But if you're not in downtown and you're going further out, like you could honestly live good on like 40K, 50K. These questions are more to do with like culture, et cetera. And someone asks, what's the work culture like in Dubai? Do you feel more or less stress and pressure? Any video that you watch on, some, on someone's experience, you have to bear in mind that everyone's experience is so subjective to so many different factors, company, team, manager. There are so many things that it's really hard to say this is the culture in Dubai. For me, there is, there's definitely been a difference in culture. Um, and I think that just comes with dealing with different people from different backgrounds. Certain people of certain cultures feel like they have more to prove and are less likely to like maybe set boundaries or say no or like to be vocal about certain things. Whereas in the UK, there is so much push for um, a flat work structure, a people should speak up, you should speak up, you should um, make it known, work-life balance is a big topic and stuff like that. So I feel like there's definitely a difference in work culture. But sometimes I'm like, I don't know if this is a difference between London and Dubai, or if it's a difference between the company I was working for and the company that I'm now working at. I will say I prefer the, cult the, the culture a lot more in the UK, but you're in a new territory, the culture is gonna be different. Most of the people who I know work here, they're not working with as big of a team as they did in London, and that puts a different level of pressure on you. Um, so I think that most of like the, the stress and the pressure that I felt last year, like 2023, was to do with coming into a new team. But having said that, I also spoke to someone who moved from a um, Magic Circle law firm in London to a Magic Circle law firm here, the same Magic Circle law firm, and she says like, life is good, she's got great work-life balance. It really depends, so I mean, like everyone's experience is gonna be different. Said so Dubai seems like there's only, there's only high level professional technical roles, is this the case? I'm not really sure what you mean by that, and maybe there's not a, enough like, maybe junior roles, and I think that would go into the, the how I answered the question before, and saying that like, a lot of industries here are new, so even like, you guys know I used to work at JP Morgan. I would have loved to have moved to Dubai with JP Morgan, but they just didn't have the department that I was working for in London. They didn't have that in Dubai. So a lot of companies don't have all of their functionalities out here. For a lot of co companies, they are growing out here because they see the potential in the region, but there isn't as many roles. And so it will only be like key things that they are trying to do here. So yes, that actually might be true. What was the hardest part of moving to another country? I think the hardest part about moving to another country is the fear you 
you feel before you move. When I was thinking about like, oh my God, like what's gonna happen to like my relationships and my friendships, like those fears, all of the things that you overthink is the hardest part, like overcoming that is the hardest part. Once you just, whatever, feel the fear and do it anyways, the rest of it, you just kind of figure it out as you go. For me, because I moved, I'm young, I'm in my 20s, it's like, it's easier for me because I didn't plant any roots anywhere. That's something that I have intentionally done and intentionally will do throughout my 20s is to not plant roots deep anywhere that makes it hard for me to move. So I'm not getting a pet because I don't want that to be something that holds me back. I'm not gonna buy a residential property that I can't then lease out um, with ease, with ease is the key. And buying residential property in the UK, you cannot rent it out with ease legally. Not gonna do that. There are all these other things that I have avoided so that I have my freedom and my flexibility. And I think that makes it easier for me to leave. Any regrets on migrating? No, like, None whatsoever. This has been, I have, there are a few decisions in my life I can count on my hands that have been like one of the best decisions that I've made. This is definitely going down in my top five as one of the best decisions that I have made. No regrets. Would I ever move back to the UK? I don't know. That's the, the, that's the real honest answer is I don't know. One of the things that would drive me back to the UK is having kids. I feel like with my upbringing, I really enjoyed it. My experience growing up of myself and my identity is not rooted in as much trauma than other people who have grown up and been the minority where they have grown up. So I grew up in Hackney, loads of black people, loads of Nigerians, by schools again, primarily black. And some of the people who I know that have grew up, grew up in like Essex or like Kent and stuff like that have a lot of issues <laughs> That sounds so rude, but they had a lot of issues growing up with like maybe like desirability or like racism and all of these things and just identity within themselves because they grew up being one of one of the only people of a certain type of way, right? And I didn't have that. And I do think about schools here. I don't know what the school's demographics are like, and maybe it's diverse enough that it wouldn't really make a difference, but I don't know what the school dynamics are like, but I like the way that I grew up. Not to say that I will put my children in an all black school or a school that's majority black, but I don't want them to be the only one and feel like, why am I so different? But there is a growing population of like black middle-class families moving to Dubai. And like loads of my um, people that I know here, friends and stuff, they're having kids and stuff. So hopefully that trend continues. It's not about like, oh, just because you have, you're black, you should only have black friends or only go to black schools. You can go to school with other black people and not even have black friends, but just knowing that there are other black people around helps you to feel more settled and not think not be so conscious. Like I've seen pictures of my friends who have gone to all white schools and then on picture day, they put them right in the middle or they put them right at the end. Just little things like that, that like, ugh, I just don't, I just don't, I just don't want that. Even like my family, a lot of my family are thinking about leaving the UK and relocating. And I also feel like the UK is somewhere that you could really enjoy when you have money. Um, but I think it's so hard to break out of the lower middle class category in the UK. I think they do so well with social mobility and moving from working class to middle class. You can do with relative ease in the UK if you buckle up. Like it really, the education is free. Um, there are so many programs and things that are out there to help people from certain backgrounds that can really help you propel. So to move out of that lower middle class um, bracket is very, very, very difficult to break free from that and actually move into financial freedom because of taxes, because of the cost of living, so many things. So I'd only really wanna go back if I had a certain level of wealth. What things do you miss about London other than family and friends? Are there any practical things? I wanna say I miss public transport because now I just get Kareem everywhere. But I feel like that's a bad habit. Like, cause even when I went back to London for four days, I did, I did a TikTok, I think I even posted it on here, YouTube shorts on this. I was in London for four days and I spent like 200 pound plus on Ubers because I'm so used to here picking up the habit, the habit of getting taxis everywhere because that's how most people get around. And I first came out was more like, no, I, like why would I do that? I take public transport in London. Why wouldn't I take public transport here? But public transport just isn't that good. It just really, really isn't that good. So you rely on 
taxis more, but I'm not complaining at the same time because I enjoy it. Like, I, when I did go back to London, I was on public transport, I was like, oh, this is ghetto. In the summer, I really miss fresh air. I miss fresh air. I miss nature walks. And when I, I remember saying this on TikTok, people was like, what do you mean nature? The desert is nature. I miss greenery sometimes and the fresh air that greenery brings, especially in the summer. Oh my God. It's like you try and go outside for a walk because you feel suffocated in your apartment and you will suffer if you go outside. Like, ugh. And especially if you have anxiety and you're outside and you cannot breathe. Oh my God. Christmas spirit and festivity side of London. Like, you know when it's London, when it's Christmas, is, when Christmas is here, like they're playing the Christmas songs in all of the, um, like the malls and the supermarkets and there's lights everywhere and it just feels Christmassy, it's cold, which adds to the vibe. Whereas here, <laughs> even though I eventually did go back and spend Christmas in the UK, here, even like the lead up to Christmas just didn't feel like it, which you, cause obviously you're in a Muslim country, but I do miss that. Oh, fast food is too expensive here. Like fast food, like if you want to get Caribbean food or African food, Enish will charge you 25 pounds plus for powdered jam and Eforiro. Like calm down, like where are you going? But I get it though, because they have to pay for rent in their location. But I just miss cheap fast food. Even if you want to get Caribbean as well, it's like 25 pounds, whereas on the high street, it's six to eight pounds. None of financial reasons Dubai is better than London. Non-financial reasons, weather. Okay, I feel like that's all the that's all the response that you need. The weather. Do you know how much black and brown people need vitamin D? Yeah, our physiology needs the sun. We need the sun, and I think in general for anyone, lighting makes such a huge difference for your mental health. Like. Uh, that's why like all of my apartments, I'm like floor to ceiling windows are needed. All of that light, it really, it really does something to you. Something as simple as going to the gym is less daunting because I'm not bracing myself for the cold when I get outside. People, I feel like the mindset of the people here is different. The thing about Dubai that you, you need to understand is that it's not like all of, it's not like the UK, it's not like the US, there's no, Besides this very small percentage of, 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 of Emiratis who actually live here, everyone has migrated here. And not just that, your visa, you're renewing it every two years. So you have to have a reason to be here. It's not like the UK where you just, you're just there, you can just do nothing. You're just sitting there claiming benefits. It's not like that here. If you're here, you're working. The majority of people here do not have citizenship and will never be able to get citizenship. The mindset of people who come here because of that is very, very different. The mindset of people who survive here is very different. I think even just aspirationally, like Dubai will always show you that there's bigger and better. Some people might not like that, but I mean, I like it. One thing you realize when you come here is the life that you perhaps want to live for some people is a lot more attainable here. If you're a soft life, babe, Dubai is the place that you can really live a soft life because it's built for the rich and everything and anything can come to you, can come to your door. I can make a phone call right now and I can have cleaners here within the next two hours. I can have a massage person here within the next hour. I can have my food delivered in the next 10 minutes. Like there's just so much ease that you can find here. Um, that's just not accessible elsewhere unless you have a crap ton of money. I think one of the most challenging thing is, I think when you see what oil money has done for the Arabs in the Middle East, and then knowing that some of our continents, some of our countries also have a good level of oil, but what are they, what, what are you doing with them? Look at your age mates. It'd be so nice if we could have somewhere on our continent that we could come to that would be as attractive as here and we just don't have it. Actually, one thing I think that's quite challenging here is that your stay here is dependent on what you do for work. So you can't just be here and do nothing. You can't just like quit your job and just think, oh, I'm just gonna chill for a year and figure out what happens. You really have to think about your visa a lot of the time. But obviously, one thing about Dubai is if you have money, you can find ways around any and everything. No, I can't do every question because my mouth is already getting tired. My friend would like to know if you're single, watch my 2023 review video. What have you learned slash gained since moving to Dubai that you didn't expect to? So much, so much that it's so hard to go into it in a video, but I would just say like an uh, even more expansive mindset and 
belief in the possibilities that are possible. I gained a lot of good friends. I didn't think I'd actually make as many good friends as I have made here. Like people that I really like and I really respect. The pros and cons are living here. Pros, weather, no taxes, people, luxury, the normalization of luxury, standard of living, so many things to do, beach, desert, high-end restaurants, so many activities. Cons? Obviously being far away from family and friends. I don't know, guys. <laughs> maybe, maybe someone else who lives here can put them in the comments. Has it been easy making friends? For me, yes, but that's only thanks to, thanks to social media. Has living in Dubai sparked your interest to know more about Islam, reading the Quran, learning Arabic? I always tell my friends who are Muslim, like, and they say, oh, I wanna move to Dubai. I'm like, you should definitely move because I think if you were Muslim, you'd have a much better experience being a Muslim here than you would in the UK, in the US. No one is gonna look at you sideways for wearing a hijab, for wearing a, 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 a baya. Um, there's prayer calls in the mall, so I, you, you know, you're more entrenched in your, in your own culture. And I think if you were a Muslim, it might, you might feel a bit more connected to your faith here, but if you're not, nothing is going to push you towards it because Dubai is built to be as attractive to as many people as possible. There are churches here, there are synagogues here, there are temples here. Um, and I didn't even go to church in person in the UK since the pandemic. And I go to church in person now. So if anything, I've moved closer to my own faith. I think the perception of Dubai is very different to what it's actually like. And I know a lot of people criticize it because of the influence of Islam on like certain rules and regulations about drinking alcohol or like um, how you conduct yourself in public and stuff like that. But what you will come to learn is that for a lot of other Muslim countries that are stricter, even other Emirates that are stricter, they see Dubai as like sin city because there is, there's so much that goes on here that is very contradictory to the perception of like this holy place. Very contradictory, very hypocritical. There's a lot that goes on here that you'd be like, oh, I didn't even see that in the UK, but I see that here. Very strange. Is it as expensive as everyone makes it out to be? Yes and no. Yes and no. It can be very expensive. If you go to touristy areas, if you go to, if you live downtown, downtown's very expensive, but it can also be very, very cheap. If you move uh, like 20 minutes out from the main places like the Palm, the Marina, downtown, if you move away from that, it can be very affordable. Does it take a lot of money to start, a real, to start in real estate in Dubai? I'm gonna say yes, um, just because mortgages from what I've seen aren't the norm and they're also a lot harder to get if you're not a resident here and the price of real estate is rising rapidly. How would you describe the dating scene? Everyone asks me about dating scene, dating scene. Okay. Dating scene, um, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I have not been dating in Dubai, so I wouldn't know. Um, and my friend who I hear is either they're married or they're single and not dating. So a few have dated and, and, and they've said that they've found it a bit strange, <laughs> a bit strange. Um, a lot of fetishization of being with a black woman. There's more men than women here. So that could be quite good for your dating optics. And I feel like from my experience, I feel like I get approached by all different types of men. One day is a Lebanese guy, the next day is a Turkish guy, and the next day is an Iranian guy. From people who I have spoken to, I think some people do struggle to really get into a serious relationship here because a lot of people use Dubai as like a as their transit phase. So then maybe they're here for one or two years, they're here on a secondment, they're not stable here. If you have a particular preference for a particular type of person, um, then you might struggle. I've spoken to people who, who are like, I will probably leave and go back to the UK just because I don't think I will have as many suitors here. One thing I wanted to touch on on this point really, really quickly is that um, there is also this perception that if you're a black woman in Dubai, then people think you're an escort. One thing I really hate is when people blank blanket people's experience just based off of the color of your skin. If you are a black woman, people are gonna think this and it's just not true. Like my experience is that everything that I've spoken about in this video, that might not apply to anybody else. You can speak to someone else and they can say the complete opposite. That doesn't negate that my experience is true, but just because I have an experience doesn't mean that this is going to be the universal experience for everyone. 
um, of a certain background in a certain country. A lot of my friends where I've asked, people have said that if you're a black woman, people are gonna think you're, you're an escort, people are gonna think you're a sex worker. Has anyone approached you in that manner? All of them are like, no, never. What are you even talking about? And that is not to say that it doesn't happen to some people because it definitely does. There are a lot of um, black escorts in Dubai. There are a lot of Eastern European escorts in Dubai. Escort sex workers, whatever you want to call them. Um, there are a lot of them here. I have, personally, I have never seen one black escort here, except from one lady who approached me in a very, very weird manner. Um, that's a story I need to tell because I was just like, oh, otherwise I've never seen with my eyes. I've seen lots of sex workers from other different backgrounds. I haven't seen a black one yet. And that just might be, be because I don't go to the places where they are at, not saying that they don't exist because I'm sure they do. I have just never seen it. Sometimes, and I'm not even trying to be shady, but also the way that you dress can lead people to think that, not because the way you dress is like slutty or whatever, but because a lot of the way we dress in the UK when it is hot, we are legs out, thumbs out, bums out, everything, because we're not used to hot weather and we come here and we dress the same. Other women who dress a bit more modestly, if you just dress how you would normally dress in the UK when it is hot, you might be mistaken here for something that you are not. I was like to me, oh yeah, no, black people, da 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 da. No, that's not the case. From, Mon if from Monday to Friday, I am wearing corporate clothes. People are not going to mistake me for being a sex worker. What sex worker is wearing a blazer and carrying a, a book bag in the DIFC? People are not gonna mistake me for that. Is it really that hot? It really gets really, really hot. Really, 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 really hot, especially in the summer. But right now, I find it a little bit cold, like 19 degrees the other morning. And I was like, this is a bit chilly. But it does get really hot, like 40 degrees, can't breathe can't be outside sweating, heat stroke, everything. So yes, let's leave that there. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you a little bit of insight into what life has been like here for me. If you have any more questions, I'll try and answer them. So just leave them in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.